Hey guys, welcome back to Split Equity. Uh, back here on the Mazda today. Uh, my plan is to start looking into the fuel system and why it's going to die after it runs for a few minutes of driving. What I'm going to do now is get it started and just let it run and see how long it takes just idling. Like if, if idling alone is enough to make it just die out. I want to know how to easily replicate the problem so that way I know for sure or at least mostly for sure when it is actually fixed. Problem with intermittent issues with a, any thing really, vehicles, whatever. You know, if it only happens sometimes, you change a part, it works, you're like, okay, well, did it fix it or is it just working now? First, I started thinking about being junk in the gas tank because, you know, he just filled it up, it stirred up things and it caused some kind of blockage. I still kind of think that could be a good, you know, chance that's what it is. I thought, well, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll just be able to fire it up and it'll run fine enough to get it back home and then I'll, I'll look into it. Well, it started up fine, no problem. Drove it a few blocks from his parents' house and it just started to, to die out. There was nothing I could do. Like, it would restart, but it would just barely idle. Um, and it would sometimes just stall. But I, could, I got it to like kind of idle long enough, but as soon as you try to start moving, it just, it just wants to bog out and die. It's kind of where we're at. That's what I know about it. I know that it does run again. I, I started up yesterday, moved it over here, as you guys saw. I want to start up now. Um, and just, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you guys sit here and just watch it run, but I'm going to basically just set a timer on my phone and just see how long it takes before it just dies out from idling. Alright, so it started without brake though, that's good. I, I pumped the pedal probably a total of like 10 times. I'm just going to let it run at a fast idle. And let me, uh, let me go ahead and start a timer here. Turn you guys off for now. We'll come back if anything happens. All right, so we're at about six minutes right now, and it's still running just fine. I'm gonna have to try to make it break. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try to drive it around the yard a little bit. I don't want, I'm here by myself, so I don't wanna take it out on the road and have it die on me and I have to like drag it back. I won't be able to do that by myself. So I gotta get it to break. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. It doesn't want to break now. I'll have to keep playing with it, I guess. So it still hasn't started to die or anything like that. So I thought, okay, well, while it's running good, I'll look into the AC. Um, I charged up the AC when I had it in my shop, and it didn't work. Um, but I did manually power probe the clutch, and it started to run, and I could, I could tell that you know, the engine slowed down, so I was like, okay, it's doing something. So just now, I was like, all right, let's 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 look at the first first thing it could be, which would be the pressure switch right here. So I just jumped the two terminals, and it started to run. There it goes. Kick back on. I wonder how it's reading that. Because that's the pressure sensor right there. 
<laughs> well, anyway, it runs. It actually doesn't slow the engine down too terribly bad. And it definitely gets cold. I know you cannot feel that, but you don't have to take my word for it. It gets nice and cold. So I'm gonna turn that off. At least I know I need to get a new pressure switch. Yeah, this is the sight glass right here. You can see it's got the green dye in there. So at least it, I, I charged it probably two weeks ago. So it, it, it definitely does not have a major leak because it still is holding some. You, know, you can see that green just went away. I'm sure it has some leak because there was nothing in it. But basically this right here is the switch. So I have to discharge the system to change that so that's probably like a couple of penny part you can see it bubbling in there and it's not running now but that's just you know residual action i guess i wonder if i plugged it back in now if it'll work but maybe it just had a little junk on the terminals or something you do have to take the grill off to get to that but they do leave you a little access port i guess that's nice on and also the compressor was really quiet. It didn't make really any noise at all. <laughs> yeah. So it does work. It isn't actually bad. It just probably was a bad contact from all those years of sitting. Just pull them off and back on again. Yes, yeah, so now it kicks them off a little bit quicker. Yeah, I did put dye in, so if it does have a leak, hopefully I can find it. I don't see anything on the condenser here. This is the, probably the most common place because stones will jump up and hit this, put a hole in it. Put back on. And I think what everybody's doing is they're just speeding up the idle a little bit in the summertime when they're running it. Oh, that's not really that bad. I have to get some kind of tachometer on this thing to see what the actual RPMs are. Alright, well this is it something. <laughs> Alright, so I can't get it to act up at all today. Um, we been messing around with the... I took the choke all the way off and I took the... Um, I think they call this a choke pull off. I took this off. It, it's set up a little different. It doesn't have the little screw in there that you can adjust. Or I think it just from the back but it's I don't think that's a problem um, I just took the fuel filter out it's definitely not the right filter because it's supposed to sit in this little bracket right down here you can actually see that but it's supposed to sit in here um, I took it off it it was flowing out the direction that should be out I poured it out looked clean I flipped around the other way yeah, a bunch of dirt comes out, but it's a filter, it's supposed to do that. But that means that there is debris, you know, in the system somewhere. So that could still be the problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a new fuel filter. I'm going to replace all the fuel line that's right here. It's about um, about five feet of five sixteenths and a little over a foot of quarter inch. The quarter inch is this one right here goes to the return fuel that sends it sends the excess back to the tank. Everything that's feed into the carburetor is 5 sixteenths. Roughly just eyeballing it, it's like four to five feet. Um, so I'm gonna replace all that and put it, uh, put hopefully the correct fuel filter on there. I'll try to drive it but I'll probably have uh, Julie follow behind me. <laughs> just in case it breaks down again. back out here on the Mazda and I'm, I actually am waiting for a new carburetor to come I actually ordered the, the correct um, Weber I sent back the Amazon one um, and also the truck is officially mine I did pay for it yesterday uh, from my buddy the uh, E90 is no longer here sold that for $2,900 pretty much just evenly wash out buying this putting plates on it um, and paying for the the Weber carburetor I thought I might as well go ahead and check out the tank uh, it looks to me like all it is is just these four bolts 
Uh, I just try to hit these with a little bit of lube a while and come back up here. Go back and roll. Just hit those a little bit. Um, I'll probably need to do something with the fuel fill filler neck. Yeah, it's everything. You can see how easy it is to see everything. There would be the sending unit right there. Might just be easier just to undo that. Or even down here. Maybe I'll just undo this one here and this one right down here provided they actually uh, turn. But nothing is really that rusted on here. Not like you might expect. I'm trying to look and see if these are... Okay, it looks like there's a, a bolt going down through the top. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know the bottom, so I may have to hold the top. I'm either going to get my jack under there or some blocks of wood or something to support it once I get that. Uh, you know, get to actually taking those off. Um, so I'm going to work on getting these undone right now. All right, they got two jacks set up. And I got one of the nuts off. The front ones are 14, the rears are 12. I'm not sure if that's just my truck or if that's the way they actually are. I actually already lost that nut that came off. Oh, they're just, they're just both inside of the socket. That time I dropped the washer. So this side should be free. Yeah, I think it will be. Oh, there's the washer. Now, that was a drive shaft. What's the easiest way into this? I guess from the back. Got to hold the nut on the top a little bit, but it almost came all the way off. I always just put new hardware in this. I mean, it's pretty standard. Looks like an M8. Everything just falls apart. It's hardly any rust, really. Alright, let's just see if we can slowly lower this down. shape at all. It's still nice and pliable. It kind of seems like they leave for the uh the hoses what am I on Jesus it has to kind of slide this way to clear the uh filler pipe it looks like there's just just barely maybe not even quite enough room against that but. Not 
like real sure how much gas in here. Well, I can lift it, so it's not that full. I mean, the gauge is showing like less than half, but I'm not really sure how accurate it is. Still or not. Right there. It's like right up against it, it's gonna be like snagged on that brake line. And then on this side, it's right up against the drive shaft. So I'm not sure how to finagle that out of there. I guess I'll play with it a little bit and show you what I figure out. All right, guys, uh, a couple days later, I'm sorry, you guys did see me working on the tank. The battery died, I did get it out. Um, I'll put up some pictures of the progress of it. Uh, as you can see right now, it is full of basically water and two of the smaller bottles of uh, CLR. And I'm just this is day two basically. This, this is like 48 hours of it soaking. It definitely seems like it's helping a little bit. Um, I'm gonna just end up flushing it a couple times just to get it as clean as possible. I may drop a bunch of bolts and nuts and what washers and stuff just scrap stuff in there and shake it around uh, probably with much less liquid in there so i can more easily move it and uh, hopefully i can get that taken care of if not a brand new tank is about 150 bucks shipped so not a huge deal if the tank is crap i've got my Historic place to put on right there. Still waiting for the Weber to come. That should be here tomorrow. Oh yeah, and I ordered a new fuel pump too. It was very cheap, like $25. I think I'm gonna dump it out now, the tank. And I'm gonna see if I can get my pressure washer going. And I'm gonna try to blast out the inside of it. It is a pretty decent sized hole at the top. I think I can get in there and blast a lot of that stuff loose and just kind of flush it a few times like that. I might try pouring some baking soda in there next because uh, I think I have a good bit of that from pool supplies. Seems like it's working pretty good. I'm gonna see if I can get you in there. We're getting most of it out, which I think will be good enough. All right, guys, um, back on the truck, the Mazda here today. I've got the new genuine Weber carb, um, polished up the wheel center caps with just some SOS pads. I think they came out pretty good for minimal effort. The rims are painted, tires are mounted back on. They're pretty good. I could probably polish them a little bit, but this is just kind of a, a temporary fix. So we're gonna get them back on after I get it running. The lowering blocks are here. I hit all the black the frame. I sprayed up under there. So everything at least looks kind of nice. <laughs> I gave it a quick little rebuild, if you will. I'm going to paint these. Um, I just kind of tested this right here. I got the uh, like bumper and trim paint. I know I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit. but uh, So I ordered, this is the sock for this right here. This is like a press fit. Fits on there pretty pretty nice. It's pretty tight. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So even if there is some junk in the tank, it won't get sucked up. All modern vehicles have this. Not really sure why they didn't do it back then. Maybe they just didn't think of it. I, I really don't know. Um, but we're gonna put that back in the tank. Tank is pretty clean as it is. 
Um, I have a new fuel pump right here. We're gonna put that on just as a good measure. It is a Carter. I don't know if there is, there you go. There's a number right there, M70196. This was the sock right here, if you care for that, FS180. This was from Rock Auto, even though it says CarQuest. Originally, I just grabbed enough fuel line to do under the hood, but I grabbed some more because I want to replace what's under the truck, too, back by the tank. Um, it looks like it's going to be, I think it's quarter, yeah, it's quarter inch for everything that's return. And then it's the size up, which I guess would be five, I think it's five sixteenths, is all of the supply. So I'm going to go ahead and replace everything under here while I do the fuel pump. I just took this, I had this covered up. Um, I'm going to do the, the hoses first. I'm going to take the hoses off, pull the fuel pump out. Looks like it's just two 12 millimeter, yeah two 12 millimeter bolts back there for that we've got the correct fuel f uh, filter also not that one so it should sit in this little stand right here um, so i think i'm just gonna put you guys on time lapse while i do all this stuff Alright, so I got the hoses all installed um, as best I could. I, you know, the hose that was on here I think was like pre-molded so it was kind of bent to, you know, fit a certain way. So I just did the best I could. I, I put the insulation or corrugated whatever back on as much as I could. Um, I got a couple of these little things here. I don't know if I can still use these or not, but... Maybe that'll clip on there. And like, this can do something like this, maybe. Yeah. And I got a smaller one there. I can probably put on those two. And I just kind of have it loop around like that, just so it's, you know, a nice flow. There's no like hard kinks or anything like that. This will obviously go into the carburetor. And um, so now I just got to put the carb, the new carb on, and I got to install the bracket for that. Then it's just down to the tank. So I got to put this guy on to here. Yeah, so you have to take this linkage off the 12 millimeter nut. You got to fold down the little tab right there. a locking tab
trying to lose that. I think I have the one from the old car where I kept that. And this is the, the style that works easiest with the, the Mazda setup. A little barrel of the throttle cable goes in there, kind of rolls over that. This is how like Toyotas are too, so this might be a, a Japanese thing. But yeah, it just sits on there like that. And I think pretty much that's the only modification you have to do to the carb itself, if I remember. I did actually have it working uh, with the original non-Weber carb without this, but then I was like, you know, it's it should have it. So we got the bracket. And everything else is already installed on the on the intake manifold, so all I gotta do is just sit this down on there and bolt it up pretty much. Just fold this back over. It's funny looking at this one it almost looks like it's a poor quality but you can see it's got weber stamped everywhere here here you got the made in spain right there it has the white uh choke but i almost feel like the amazon one overall visually like if you were just you know knew nothing about it you'd probably think that one looked better but I feel like just the way this motion feels, it almost that just alone makes it seem like it's made a little bit better. So, go ahead and get this installed on there. installed um, I actually just use my own 12 mil 12 millimeter um, flange nuts right here which will kind of hold that in place it won't it shouldn't back off um, I may need to adjust the throttle cable here a little bit but it's probably okay yeah it's a, it's a little bit extra slack I'll probably end up running this this way a little bit but we'll get it running first before I worry about that um, hooked up the vacuum advance here this goes over to your distributor uh, I need to push that on a little further and we'll need to hook up the electric choke uh, for right now I'm just using I just found a keyed 12 volt source right here in one of these connectors which probably is going to end up going away once i clear out all the unneeded wires on this thing but for now that's my choke 12 volts uh the tank is still not in um, i'm probably going to stop for tonight i'll come back out tomorrow and screw with the tank and get that back up um, but at least i got this all buttoned up right here looks eh, looks okay i think i'm gonna throw the wheels on because i kind of want to see what that looks like and uh that's probably all i'm gonna do for tonight so i actually used uh sticky weights on the inside right here just so i didn't have to see these kind of wheel weights on the outside because that would really look bad to me Well, once we get it lowered down a little bit, and it's not so dorkily high, I think it'll be all right. So I get some something a little bit more decent for it. All right, I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, 
guys, it's the next morning. Uh, it's actually really cold this morning. We had like 60 degree weather for the past couple days. And, uh, today, we reminded that it's still um, Basically, I'm gonna throw the tank back up in there today, hopefully this morning. Um, I kind of just put a little bit of gas in it uh, a couple like yesterday or day before and just had it sitting up um, like this just to try to get everything to run down to this corner it's just a little bit um, so I'm going to try to just like use a rag with these uh, needle nose here and see if I can just kind of sop up the last little bit of crud that's down in here it's probably easier just to stick my hand in there We have the filter screen now, so it's not going to pick up any of the debris. And of course, we also do have another filter. There's an actual fill filter, which is all there to, you know, help prevent that stuff from happening. But I'm just trying to get as much of it out of here as I can. You know, I mean, if it was still really, really full of the junk like it was, that can clog up that uh, pickup screen you know so you still have the same problem but I think as long as it's just a little bit it will never completely clog that thing up so where it'll still do its job and let the, the gas flow I think that's pretty good like that. The tank weighs basically nothing when it's not when it doesn't have any fuel in it, so it shouldn't be very hard to get it to go back up. Um, but I am gonna replace the fuel hoses that are down here. Alright guys, I've got the tank installed. Uh, when I was out here earlier, it was just freezing cold and I couldn't feel my fingers after about five minutes, so it's like five degrees warmer now, but there's at least sunshine, so I was able to get it done. Um, everything is installed. There's new, the two, they're like, you know, about yay long for the tank uh, side of the, um, the hoses. So everything is new, fuel system wise, really. I mean, except for the tank not being new, it's Oh, um, I did also blow out the line that's coming up from the tank right here. I took this off and shot air back through the other way, and there was fuel in it because stuff shot out. So at least we know for sure there's no debris in there. Um, there's about two gallons I just dumped. Well, one and a half gallons. The other half is on the floor because I thought I could not use a funnel. Um, but I don't really know how to pour get, uh, gas down to where it actually go into the bowl, to, like to fill the bowl right now. So I guess I'm just gonna. I know I don't have much battery because this battery has been run down a few times. So I guess I'm just gonna shoot a little brake clean in here. <laughs> get it to yeah, it's gonna have to pump fuel all the way up from the tank so it's probably gonna take a couple of tries uh, I need a key though and also I have not um, adjusted anything on the cargo it's just however it came is how it is right now
I guess this engine doesn't require much power to spin it over. So that's good. All right, I see a little bit of fuel in the filter now, so it should be close. You can see that or not. There's a little bit down in there. There's a little bit of liquid in there. lit off of the brake clean and that was it but i mean we see we're getting fuel <laughs> i feel like i already see a little bit of debris in the bottom of it figure out why it wants to stay up so high. It's like the other one wanted to go down too fast. This one, and it's, yeah, I can see it's not actually even on that. Yeah, I can feel this is a little warm, so that should be getting power. It's way off of the hot idle screw so that's not holding it up but yeah the choke definitely works because you see it it's going to be open now so why is it staying so fast i wonder if i restart what it would do now not sure why that is doing that. 
guess I can check mixtures and stuff like that, but I don't think that's I don't think that's it. Alright, I guess let me play with this a little bit and I'll when I figure it out I'll let you know. Alright, got her back down on the ground and I did figure out the carb issue. Um, it seemed to either be uh, that the choke needed to be adjusted a little bit um, and or the base idle screw was actually... Let's just leave that there. <laughs> uh, the base idle screw was screwed in too far and it wasn't allowing the throttle to close all the way um either way it works fine now. i drove it about 25 miles before um <clears throat> i did take the car back off because i wanted to just kind of make sure that it was actually um nothing physically wrong with the carb uh, it's been sitting for a little while right now, so I'm probably going to go ahead and treat it like a cold start. So, I'll give it like three pumps. There you go, so high idle. I'll let it run there for a couple seconds. Just tap it, comes down. I think I need to actually lower the the base idle. Um, it didn't seem like it really was going any lower than that right there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just work on that a little bit right now. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see where the, if the AC would still kick on and where it. Yeah, see, I feel like that may be good for the the AC because it keeps it up. Higher. I really wish I had a tachometer in here. Yeah, because right now it's not really going lower than that, like, second idle, if you will. And also, um, that right there is, what, about six gallons. Actually, now it's probably, like, five and a half gallons. Uh, maybe five. Yeah, probably, it's probably about five gallons now. Of fuel in the tank and it's just barely above e two two gallons in the tank it didn't budge the needle but we were playing with this the other day or well, at least i was um, half a tank on the float was about a quarter tank on this gauge and i mean that's fine you know i know now exactly you know i think i'm pretty sure it's a 16 gallon tank um i'll be able to kind of calculate mileage and stuff like that um, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of play with the base idle screw now and just see if I can get this to come down a little bit more. Uh, I think I got her balanced pretty good without using any kind of a gauge, you know, that being a tachometer and also a vacuum gauge. Um, but it definitely was a little, a little faster than I think it needed to be. The bottom screw right here is the mixture and then the screw that's up under here right here is the base item screw so i just turn that this screw kind of clockwise so it slowed down a little bit and then i was trying to kind of eyeball slash ear meter the idle uh, mixture I think that's pretty smooth now. But the choke is definitely working much better on this car than the one on the Amazon. And, you know, uh, this one definitely works up. I did I marked this is where the original was, so I can turn it a little bit. Um, which I think actually is making the choke work a little bit less. Um, but it seems like that's pretty good. Anyway, I'm happy that it's running and driving again, and hopefully actually reliable until the next thing breaks. <laughs> so, 
all right guys thanks for watching please subscribe if you enjoyed this video um and i'll see you in the next one peace